Is it really like that for a lot of writers? Do, like, do they really do writers feel that exclusivity? Do they feel like they're not part of a, of a, a a modern society? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know we do it over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, I it, vice it, your fucking heart. Yeah, exactly. Go I like the, I like the good questions because mm. this this is what the podcast should be about. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, one, two, one, two. Feeling a little bit sensitive today, ladies and gentlemen. It's Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. Uh, celebratory as of the other day because uh, it was uh, an anniversary of the live stream show. If you guys are familiar with the live stream show, we do it every Wednesday on Facebook page, Killer Keller Official. And that's, uh, it has to be said, I, I partied pretty hard. Big shout out Graffiti Kings inside the place. Um, all area crew, share, share. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Subscribe, hit the button and all that business. Um, we're dealing in underworld right here. And, uh, and rightly so. Um, for those of you who are familiar with, you know, movies such as Style Wars and Kings and Toys and... and you're definitely going to be familiar with this particular brand known as the City of Paranoia. And inside the house, we have the man like Dr. ID MTR. How are we, brother? Hi, man. How's it going? Oh, good. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure. Uh, it is a city of paranoia, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Since the very early, early years of me being here, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Big, big change. And For sure. Yeah. Big Brother is watching us all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is uh, an accent there. Originally from Poland, right? Yes, South Poland. Yeah, yeah. Big You've seen me perform, haven't you? You, you kind of brushed on us. Uh, I've, a bit. I've been, I've been, yeah, I've been in a business for for a quite a long time, mm. uh, more than twenty years now. So yeah, just come from a kind of industrial place, mm. um, rough as I think London used to be mm-hmm. in eighties mm. and nineties. So yeah, this is pretty much my origin, and uh, yeah, I'm here like sixteen years. Sixteen now, years. so. That movie is fully dedicated, yeah, it's a dedication to that city and the writers and the people who live here. It's crazy, 16 years. I mean, at what point do you define yourself a Brit, a Londoner? You know, I mean, I, I get it. I, I've been in London for probably the same amount of time, 20 years maybe. And, you know, I'm originally from South, from Sussex. And I do often think to myself, am I a Londoner or not? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've, I think people ask, especially my friends, they ask me how I feel after so many years. And I think I'm fully Londoner. I'm proud to represent that graph scene. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, there's no kind of way back for me. Mm-hmm. I'm... I'm breathing this this air and I just and I feel it and I love the trains and mm. I love graph scene and I always loved that that dark gloomy um theme of London you know me so yeah I've been I've been inspired since I since I came here by how London looked like mm. and how it still look you know it 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 it, it does evolve so. I think for any creative doesn't matter what, what world you're in London holds uh, an energy to it you're, you're like a moth to a flame. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you yeah. Know, it's, it's, it's up there in the New Yorks and the Parises, you know? That's the thing, the city, you cannot be bored. Um, I remember when I came to London and uh, we were walking through Shoreditch and tagging. I'm not a big tagger, but I, I did so. And uh, you could rent places in Brooklyn and Shoreditch for, for like you know, 80 quid a a room a week, you know what Mm. I mean? And uh, there was nothing there Mm. 15, 16 years ago. Not nothing, but it was just, it looked completely different. Mm. And um, just the mess, the rubbish, the garbage on the streets, um, the homeless people Mm. um, and and tags. And 
it was like abandoned place from from New York. I don't even know how it was thirty years ago, mm -hmm. but it's been already a bit grimy mm -hmm. fifteen years ago. Past, so yeah, right. it's a it's a big inspiration because I, I come from this very industrial place yeah. where the metal been produced and coal been digged and so on. So wow. so it it yeah. You know what I mean? I just I can feel it. And you grew up, you grew up like that as a kid, in and around that kind of that 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 industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of families where I'm kind of from. Yeah. The parents worked in mines or or in in the steel factories and mm. so on. And so um, yeah, we grew up among the chimneys when they were like mm, mm. <laughs> and so on. Yeah, it was. Uh, I do remember it as a, as a very great time. Um, I guess it's really hard to kind of think back that far. <laughs> it is, it is, but it's um, it's always inspiring mm. to kind of come back in the old memories and all that stuff. So yeah, oh, yeah. the memories always flood back yes, in it when you get yes. into those. See, anybody that's from the outside looking in, you know exactly what we're talking about. You know, you go to these places with huge ambition of like London being that the, it's the, the mecca of so many things and. But when you go back to your original home, it always feels like, ah, oh, come back for a reason. This is cool. I'm resetting. There's like a level of it's well filling. It, it it's yeah. I don't really go back too often though. No. Um, and 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 Poland changed a lot mm. through uh, European Union and the money that flown from from there. Mm. So it's like London. London changed since the first of City of Paranoia mm. that been out years ago. To the second part, um, London went through a, a lot of changes mm. um, um, in terms of the, like a bit of the culture, a, a fashion, and and the graph itself, mm. and um, yeah, all investments in the city as well. So yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you actually came at a, at a perfect time of the gentrification, the change of the tide of the like you say the the up the upward uh, build and uh, re building of places like Brick Lane, Old Street, things like that. Uh, so that. We're talking 10 years ago now, but it was certainly on the up as you were there. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. I think that uh, this is when the street art uh, as well it just uh, kind of uh, gained um, tolerance and respect from mass, mass. mass media and people. And uh, I think the people took easy on, on graph, generally speaking, not as hard because they, you know, it's hard to tolerate legal side of graph and then being so being a cant towards illegal graph. So oh, they had like to yeah. they had to level it up a you, bit. You mean the public perception? Public from the perception, public? exactly. Yeah, so okay. that was another yeah. big change um, yeah. in those years uh, when I came here. So yeah. I mean, look, when 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 anyone comes into a podcast, we barely say anything until this gets played and it we're on. Okay, so <laughs> this is we this is the first conversation we we're actually having about any of this and yeah. what I. The first thing I got given was this, and I'm like, "This is a legit built dock. It's like got everything, and it's it's on YouTube, readily available for you to check out as well. City of Paranoia one and two. Um, uh, you created something, and this is after me watching it a couple of times the other day. You've created something that is so it throws that." out to people exactly what you just said there there's street art and then there's graph there's legal and illegal but when you put it in the context of something like this which essentially is documented story it tells it your attitude in this document is very different to anyone else that's documented it before elaborate on what your feelings and emotions were for this and at a time where street art was getting all the praise and any other piece of graffiti wasn't well, a lot of questions and hard, <laughs> hard to answer quickly. But um, yeah, the movie itself, um, the whole idea of being, um, the whole idea started when me and my friend didn't agree with how graph is shown to the people, to the writers and to the public. Mm. Um, a lot of majority, I would say, graph movies are extremely boring. Um, 
just shot from an angle, no plot, um, no message behind the, what the writers have to say. And yeah, it's just pretty boring, uh, pretty boring piece of, of cake. So the idea was to reach the wide audience mm. and not only a, um, a writers, but no, uh, just random people. Mm. So people like my dad, like my auntie, like your, your, mm. your mother. Mm. So they can see a bit of like who we are really behind the scenes and what we think about this and, and where are we getting with it. Mm. And on the top of that, there's a lot of, there's a lot behind the curtain, behind the curtain, you know, there's a lot, there is a lot hidden, a lot of hidden stuff. Mm. Mm. Um, so that was the idea, and um, what exposing the raw, exposing, exposing us, our feelings and our perception on, on the trains, or ri- uh, writers in general. Oh, exactly. So not only showing the um, just the painting, the action, that if you are a writer, you're bored with it because everyone knows how to write. If you are a writer, don't get me wrong, mm. you know mm. because you do paint. So. For us, it was a bit more about what we think as a people, because in the end of the day, we're human beings, mm-hmm. so we've got some thoughts. And uh, that's why the, um, in the movie, we talk a bit of about um, a street art and, and, and the train scene. Mm. Why, why we choose this, what's the difference? And the guy who is kind of interviewing me um, is not the guy who is doing graph. So for him as well, it was a bit of, um, mm. so, you know, it was something new. Um, I'm the, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think I think every time I have a guest in or someone contacts me, and I'm just like, yo, I can't believe it. Mm. It's amazing. You, to, to me, the regular dude, super fan of the whole thing, I just lose my shit. So I can yeah. totally relate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, it's it's about the journey that that you don't really experience from any movie. That feeling that the graph is about the journey mm-hmm. from point A to point B. But what happened in between those? Then you yeah. don't see. So yeah. when you watch the movie, we showing kind of um, a bike route, a, a, a car route, a, a train route, and. Um, and one more, I completely forgot. <laughs> anyway, um, underpasses, loads. Of I think so. Yeah, walking exactly, yeah. walking. So all them, the people were asking, "Why are you showing this?" And I said, "Well, because this is a part of the journey. A part of every mission is just traveling. It's this is the what consumes your time, and this is how we do commute to these places mm-hmm. by." them methods of transport you know i mean on the mm. food on the bike mm, mm. on in a car it depends wow. and we did want to show them uh lovely landscapes if you if, if you if you want to call them like this um but we picked obviously the tunnels as mm. a as a symbol of underground and uh mm. you know of this movement so yeah so yeah another one of the one of the message kind of that is in the movie yeah and a message it certainly impl- implies um it feel it felt like when I was watching it, it felt like like you say, the curtain was slightly removed. It actually wasn't about the graph itself. What was what I found most interesting is the idea of like a whole scene having their own way of life that is literally a di- on a whole different grid to any other way of life. That was really highlighted in there, and it it brought that to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is um. Is it really like that for a lot of writers? Like, do they really do writers feel that exclusivity? Do they feel like they're not part of a, of a, a a modern society? Well, um, <laughs> you know, we're doing over here. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I it, vice it, your fucking heart. Yeah, exactly. Out. I like the I like the good questions because mm. this this is what podcast should be about. Mm. Um, not easy questions. I would say uh, every writer, as every human being, is different. So I would say um, a lot of people I know, um. They really feel like being part of that underground society and part of the game. Mm. But also, I know a lot of people who just do this for the sake of fame or, uh, yeah, kind of 
just being being visible and being known by the other peers. Mm. Um, because we're talking about the movie and about myself, so I can only talk about myself. Yeah, we're, and, we're talking um, in retrospect as well. Yeah, this one's yeah. Been out, it's been out for a while, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been out for a while. So it, mm. it, this movie shows clearly that this is not only a, um, a something that I do, it's just a passion, it's just a way of life. It's a lot of sacrifice that people don't understand if they don't live inside that 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 kind of game, if we can call it. Um, I think this though. I think this is a strong case of your. It isn't glorifying it. It isn't making it. That's this is my humble opinion. It doesn't glorify it. What it does is it opens a bit of a. It opens the box a little yeah. bit more, and says to people, "This is, this is, this is not a choice. This is a lifestyle. This is, you know, it's like if you're going to go and be a gypsy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's your life." Yeah. This is it. It really felt like yeah, like this. People, they they literally, that's all they know. That's what they do. That's true. It's it's a uh, it's it's. If you look deeply into it, into that footage, you will, you will feel the amount of stress and kind of like oh stress man ticking yeah. ticking, ticking ticking bits. It's this is what what's going on every week kind of or what did happen yeah. every week i was stressed watching it yes <laughs> <laughs> with the music with the music yeah for that's for sure but um um does it feel like that is it i mean just to watch it it's stressful like I'd, unless you are a cold person very cold person and you don't have any emotions um which i don't believe happen i think everyone if you go to the deep um, deep level tunnels, or you run in a, in a, in a live traffic with the trains passing by next to you, yeah. you. It's impossible not to feel that kind of um, emotions that we feel. Mm. Um, as an editor, as somebody that edits um, like content for the live show, and I do, you know, I do, you know, content creating for. I I know you're saying it's bouncy and jumpy and dancey yeah. as you think it is because. <laughs> You're in the moment and you're not listening to music. You're not there doing the thing it's, that you think is it's looking cool. Like you're actually having a hard time and it's, it's just crazy. It's funny because the guy who helped me to edit it, um, he said to me one day, he didn't sleep all day and uh, then weekend. And he was, um, when I went home, because old movie went like we've done in Edgeware in like secret location. And um, so one day I'm coming back to him and he's super tired and he's like, I said, ah, you know, I've been I've been working a little bit more because I couldn't just I couldn't just stop when you left. So um, and he said to me that when everything was done and he started his new projects, helping other people editing the movie, he said he never felt anything like this before, like when doing this oh, movie before, because it was like his newborn baby excitement um a lot of fear why even not being inside with us you know he was just the guy i bet who helped to polish and to edit mm. um so uh, yeah but i have that feelings back then and still um it's a thrill that um uh, is it a thrill it's a it's it's it's, it's a, yeah it's a positive thrill it's not it's not negative it's a it's a positive thrill um but because i'm just loving it I don't treat it like um, a dose of adrenaline that some people say that, ah, we're doing it strictly for adrenaline. Mm. So I don't look at it because if, if I go out from my home, I don't think like, ah, adrenaline rush. I just want to do something really nice, something creative. And I'm very happy with the outcome. It's like you when you're making a music, you, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it just... You don't think about the audience and what the people will write about it. You think that I want to make, compose this great song mm. and I want it to be great for myself. Mm. Well, I hope you do so. I, do. <laughs> I, do. so I hope you do so. I do. So it's the same with me. You know, for me, it's just uh, it's, 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 the, it's the passion. It's, uh, um, yeah. That's why I'm not really showing off too much because it's for myself, first of all, and for mm. the friends. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, you certainly, it certainly feels like you speak for, you speak to a generation of uh, of graph creatives. You know what I mean? It feels like this is this is it's it's more than just documenting. It feels it it, it, 
it would be nice if the people will uh, lose a bit of their ego. It, it, it will just if they can just leave their ego and and they kind of showing off at home. And that movie as well is a kind of is a is a. Um, mm, I directed this movie so that people can understand then you can still do really good stuff mm. and um, you can create something nice you can you can experience that unbelievable trips um, to underground to what overground layers mm. without um, without need to be on Facebook to 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 participate in some social media dramas mm. and that um, it's only about you and your motivation and what you really want to achieve. Mm. Um, this is about this, you know. Mm. That movie shows that, that motivation, the passion, that that you do it for yourself, you know. Yeah, it it does. It's, it's, it's a very humble, it's a very humble uh, movie. Like, I, you know, I get the feeling that... Uh, I do get the feeling that it's something that you you've done to give people an insight and also the energy of it like did you ever think to yourself man did you ever think oh shit's going to get me in trouble man like this shit mm. I mean your editor obviously clearly yeah, felt yeah, that yeah, way yeah. by the sounds of it like you must have thought to yourself look this is a bit of a mission I've kind of got to over, I, I've got to see through now because you know that's not glamorous, man. That's that's a yeah. that's a burden on your shoulders. It's it's it, when I made it, I knew it's not. Well, I didn't know it's gonna bring so much heat as it did, but I knew there will be um, there will be consequences of 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 such an action. Mm. So releasing that really pro really close, really close, it, close, close. It, yeah. So so it's it's. I knew that such a project will have enormous impact on on the people behind the screen on the audience not only in england but abroad and especially for the yeah long arm of the law in mm. britain so um but at the same time i knew something has to be done because just hiding stuff and hiding over years over years mm. it will not bring anything it's like, you know, if you are a wise man, why not to share it with other people hmm. and kind of uh, start a conversation about something? So That's right. That you movie, said it, yeah, you yeah. said it in context to the podcast. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's right, exactly. when you came through. And the movie is kind of a conversation with the with the viewer, you know? So mm. it, it is. And um, But yeah, it brings a lot of uh, heat and uh, a lot of problems and... Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if another part will ever come out. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the other side of the curtain. This That's is behind the curtain, behind yeah, the curtain. Now, exactly, exactly. They, like you say, these are conversations that um, are important to have because uh, these these things, for better or worse, change people's lives. And um, again, uh, there wasn't anything glorious in this for me. It was amazing to see. But I felt like, yo, this is the, this feels like the truth. This is a physical version, and it's a real, real, real account. And I, I just felt like, yo, man, this is, this is, this is like as much a dark side as like a, a real. This is what. This is almost like, don't do this because <laughs> it's. Scary. In a way, yeah, if you know the consequences, yeah, it's definitely that's the message in a way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you put it um, out there, dude. Like, yeah, um, it was incredible to watch for real. It's it's. When you do such a movie or any project I like, it's um, every writer got the thing, and every person is not a writer, it's about writing. Is everyone want to be big in a way? So when this move, when I started this movie, there was a lot of footage, mm. a lot, and a lot of great stuff that could be shown to the people. But then, the question you kind of facing in a mirror is. Do I really want to show everything I have? Or I will just go, as we spoke before as well, just or we just go super delicate on the theme and we just show something not to piss off the guys from the top. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, this yeah. movie, in the end of the day, it, I feel like we could show a lot more and um 
I say we because obviously I've been picking two guys that I've been doing stuff with, but we had a lot more. But just health and safety, as in England, they, everyone say, said to me, maybe not. Maybe just keep it in the dark room for one day to come, you know what I mean? And mm. then you show the rest. But um, this is a very chill out version of what it could be. <laughs> Mm -hmm. On that DVD, God, and that's so, chilled out, <laughs> so so um, uh, so humble and chill out the version and um, humble for real, because because like you say, if you're gonna if you're going to tell a story, like a good book, a good autobiography, you've kind of got to you've just got to accept that this is this isn't about you. This is about a thing, isn't? This is about a story. Yeah, this is about yeah, this is story of of about the guys and even when we um, a friend of mine he said you know after us there will be another generation of crazy young freaks yeah. who really want to do it yeah. and they will do it and they always will be a slightly better uh, than us or the generation before mm. so yeah it's it's till the very last moment it just we want to say that yeah I'm here mm. uh, but yeah there will be space for someone else. Um, hmm. you know in the future and i'm very glad and happy to kind of pass it over to someone it's an organism keeps them yeah it is and it, if it ain't you doing it someone else will do it you have to that's another it's exactly the same with the podcast you know what i mean it's like it's almost like you just have to accept that uh it's a platform that will if it in existing now it will exist isn't mm. it and yeah it's it, it's it, like the podcast here and like the movie it just, uh, like I said, it's a form of communication because what I think as well, what I can see over the years, there is now, maybe that there is no, there is lack of communication between writers from different generations. And what I mean by this is schooling in a way, you know what I mean? Just mm. taking under the, the your wings someone younger and just showing him stuff and explaining and kind of, because this should be like it you know in england mm. especially i see the big the, this is the biggest problem in england i see over the years there's lack of respect from the younger generation to the older guys and this is massive it's a massive and it's really negative mm. and it has negative impact on the culture mm. in england uh what i see and how i see it. um mm. and there should be more communication which means we need to drop your know, drop our wings a bit like lower mm. and allow the younger guys to kind of come into our world mm. and um only by this we will achieve something bigger than what we see around us right now you know mm. so so i hope i hope people after watching such a movie will kind of um understand and kind of come together you know mm. it's not easy to let your ego a bit down mm. you know but um yeah also, obviously, the younger guys should respect the oldest. It does. It works like vice versa. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it does. And I, I feel that it, you, we have a choice. Mm. We have a we and and uh, to to be treated with a level of respect from from the wider public, you actually have to respect each other to begin with, right? You have to be in communication. Exactly. And like you say, there is this there there. From what I understand and what you've kind of uh, explained there, there is a slight divide. I I think I think technology plays a big part in it i think technology doesn't help it, it does because obviously the the older you are the less you want to use social media and stuff mm. and nowadays is a big thing and uh, even for myself i try to avoid it um but in the end of the day you've got a uh, graph gems like obviously the events where, where everyone mm. paints and and mm. and you can bump into people and you can talk but what i've seen is is just um too much showing off um, mm. instead of sit, like sit, go to the pub, sit down, have a beer mm. and talk and maybe plan something and discuss, exchange some information, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, but the, the problem with the new, like the era and the new technology is like everyone want to be this on the top, on the top of the game, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like this addiction. Oh. If you don't get like, then you feel a bit of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so the same there. It's addiction, and, uh, right? straight yeah. up addiction. And, um, Back to where I grew up, it's it, the, the rules were simple and it's hard to bring them to England because obviously I live here so many years. But mm. if you if you fucked up with some crew, like you you did go to their spot and you paint behind the back, you would be smashed. You would lose your teeth. Really? 
and and by oh. this they will every time they will see you they will punch you and then if it's a legal war it's on the street and then so everyone was afraid of doing such a thing wow wow because you wouldn't have a life mm. why in here in like what i see in london or years mm. the, a lot of younger guys they do something bad and the older guys they kind of say ah oh, well you know Mm. you know this is how it is well it's not how it is because mm. if you don't say if you don't react it goes deeper and deeper like the the, the lack of respect you mm. know what i mean so this is how i grew up like you would be smashed in the face That's just scary and um me, but this is how we gain respect and it, it, i always said respect to the older guys hmm. there was no choice i mean you yeah. had to and it was it, it's yeah it's scary on one hand but yes it's educational in a way, you mm. know what I mean? Like in the form of like yeah, violence a bit, but um, in here you don't have this. Um, I well, live yeah. obviously here, so I, I need to kind of adjust myself to this. Um, but yeah, that thing's changed in graph. Mm. And I don't think this is for good. I don't think actually it is for good. But, yeah, I think so, no. But yeah, it's... Uh, um, a thing that I always like bring up on a couple of levels on podcast is that is that uh, how the industry, the world, the world market, the PR companies, uh, like you say, have accepted street art for what it is. Uh, but this scene, like we've spoke, is an organism. It will continue. Names will come and go. The bigger thing has been going for like 30 years. Yeah. It's a formula that everyone knows, you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a habit and a, and a lifestyle that will never easily disappear. Um, and there's some marketing people in some of those biggest PR companies that sit on the top, top floors. Yeah. Um, you can't tell me you're not influenced by graffiti at its rawest. It, it's been going on for so long. It's such, an, it's such a built-in part of the way we live we have a life, you know. Yeah, this is this is a huge theme, big big theme, big topic. I mean, I think both sides. So we're talking about big industry and us yeah. writers are influenced by each other in a way, mm. because how they change, transform our graph into the kind of to the public eye. Mm. It's in a way always inspiring to us. However, you want to avoid and 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 mm. like say no, 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 fuck that, no, no. You are, you mm. are just the fuck you buying iPhones and stuff like that, mm. and the adverts just play on you, you know. So, and and vice versa, mm. and and the same with them. They look at the graph and say, ah, oh, we can make money on it because we, yeah. First of all, because p young people buying it and they love it, and second, because they see some potential, artistic potential. They in do, it. yeah. Years ago, when we when I started graph. There was always a battle between legal and illegal writers. And more precisely, that whoever did legals was a pussy. And obviously, trains, truck side was a like, yeah, hmm. done. And um, my crew back then, the crew was built of like five people, or whatever. Um, we did both. We did trains and legals. And a lot of people didn't like it because it was like betrayal of a very hermetic, hard, hardcore, um, hardcore puff. And then, you know, charging money and, and taking cans mm. and doing some legal thing for someone was like, hey, come on, man, this is not good, you know? Mm. But for us, we didn't have jobs and this is how we made money for, or how we made, how we collect the cans to paint the trains. Mm -hmm, okay. So we did this and we paint the trains for that cans. So, and uh, we did want to progress. The only way of progress is do legal rules. And uh, no many writers, under, I think, understand that. That you have to do legal rules mm. to progress. By painting trains, you will not progress too much. If you don't draw, you will not progress. Only blind person will say differently. You have to do legals. And this is the truth. However, you might not like it, but this is the truth. So, over the years, over the years, um, I think it was like this. Until mm. the, I think you had interview with... Um, drugs i think yeah that's it and i think he said really nice stuff he said um about the banksy i think mm. it was like when he was going to this all football games mm, that's and right as, as, and at one point um it was really nice what he said it was like when he realized the things like going into the right direction 
and he can hide less is when his mates um, not appreciate kind of um, approved Banksy and approved that form of art, which is graffiti. The cultural appropriation exactly. of it. Exactly. Yeah. And then he was fine. He was finally he was a cool guy. Mm. Cool, but the one that obviously offended. And, but I think that Banksy did open this kind of doors mm. for, for 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 that um, commercial world. Mm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, many people might hate him. I don't think it's as, as bad as people saying because he does really nice stuff for me. Yeah. And I'm a hardcore train writer. So also, I, yeah, I'm kind of, I like his stuff, you know. There is a message and I love the message. Yeah, of course, thing. we're talking in retrospect. And, of course, you, know, yeah. you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. When, when you were doing that stuff back in the day, yeah, I guess that was the order of the day. And you do have to take L's on having to do a legal thing. People do that now, like like it ain't nothing, and that's what's crazy. That's what the that's the Banksy effect. It's like uh, it's a bit of a Mister Me Too. Like anyone can do it, and then you just you kind of take your photo on Instagram. You don't even need the wall to stay up. <laughs> the wall could be <laughs> the wall could be knocked down for you because you got your photo. Yeah, exactly. Like this is that world now that we're we're in, and. Uh, yeah, I just find I find documentaries like this like, historical in in the fact that it ain't always the photo. The photo depicts how beautiful and how you know and culturally appropriated it is. It's it's okay to do this graffiti. Now. It actually gentrifies a place and makes it look nice when there's some graffiti. They the councils love that shit right now, right? Oh yeah. yeah. But, but but what's crazy is. There is another, there was, is, and can be another side to everything. Like, do you know what I mean? There is a... Yeah, there is, um, there is, yeah, there is a lot that people don't see. And through that movie that you can just kind of uh, pick a certain percentage of, of that feelings, you know? <clears throat> just uh, that many people don't understand. There's lack of sleep. You go to work <clears throat> and uh, you sleep one hour or you don't sleep at all. Then you come back home. You really want to sleep. You have to go out with your missus. <laughs> and you're really pissed off because obviously if you don't get sleep, you're pissed off and mm. you have to do this. You have to go shopping and this and that. And then I don't know how you guys do you it. sleep in the morning, the radio house, six in the morning, boom, doors hinges out. And then you go to the cop shop and then you're on a bail. I've been more than 10 years on a bail. Really? So, yeah, just always the curfew. The, um, just not being able to to use the public transport, uh, not being able to have spray cans, and so on, and so on. Years coming back to the station, signing up at eight p.m. every day at the cop shop, what? just 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 for the sake of like not going out and and so on. So there's a lot a lot a lot behind wow. the scene that the people don't know. But it sounds painful. Dude. Yeah, it's seeing this shame glamorous. <laughs> so yeah, there's a, a lot. Um, the people only very close people understand and they maybe not understand but they will see in your eyes you know, mm. being tired in a way sometimes but mm. you know, it's um if if that would be only for to show off um you, mm. would, you wouldn't you, i wouldn't do it you mm. know what i mean because it, it ain't really the thing you no yeah. no it's just, it's nothing nice you know what i'm saying like <laughs> staying in a bush all night in, in cold and watching some like train or it's it's pretty stupid thing for average person to do if you can just be in your bed Yo, i'm saying like cause some people have you know th that has been raised a couple okay. of times on podcasts okay. and i do i have to agree i'm like yo like what do you do in a <laughs> what do you do in that situation? Do you just sit, you just have a sandwich? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's some, what I mean. yeah, some people are, yeah. It's just like, I like to be on my own a lot of times at night, so I enjoy, you know what I mean? Or I used to enjoy, you know what I mean? Just, uh, uh, just, just, just to watch and just, uh, it's, it's just, it's very quiet. I do like nighttime more day than day. Because you don't have traffic, you don't have... Is it like, like fishing? Is it like sitting there kind yeah, of Yeah, a little chilling? bit. Yeah, with the difference when I went to fishing with my mates, I've been super bored, so... <laughs> <laughs> Extremely bored. The irony. Yeah. <laughs> the irony. Exactly. I'm, not, I'm not a very big fishing fan. No, no, no. Um, to, to circle back around on this, 900,000 views, uh, approximately, mm, yeah. and counting on YouTube. Uh, did you ever... Th All right. Was there a PR in place for this? Was there a marketing camp? Was there anything no. that... Or was this just genuine intrigue by the public to wanting to see it? Well, it's... 
no, it, it, it's not. It's there was no PR. There was no advert in terms of like um, paid promotion. Hmm. Um, I will come back to the first movie because it's important. Like the first movie came out when the era of internet wasn't as big. Hmm. The first movie sold in two weeks fully. That's it. And I, I literally, I just got it and it was gone. So Damn. today, yeah, it was gone. Still people asking for it, but it's just too much money to produce a small amount of movies. Wow. Uh, anyway, second movie, it was really hard to sell because, um, and I was in touch with Germany, with Hungary, with with Australia and so on and so on. So um, the era of internet obviously consumed hmm. the DVDs and so on. Everyone can download stuff. But there was no PR um, for that. It was just from, just the, you know, people said and they spread the links and they pass it over and so on and so on. And uh, yeah, you just say about YouTube and there is a lot of like Russian and other websites where there's another probably nine hundred thousands of them. So it's a uh, BBC where... Yeah, yeah, you uh, mentioned it before. We, yeah, 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 where they were interested in in that movie. They were interested in podcasting that movie. Crazy. But their problem was the name on the movie to promote it because otherwise you know it's also for me it would be a risky thing to do because then if there is no name on it means real name um some they could oh, what is they it like could a use director, it. director yeah yeah oh, so you're there talking they could about... they could take um the whole um uh the copyrights and everything for themselves <laughs> because there would be no one on the yeah. It, it, I, obviously, there is my like nickname and stuff like my what I, what, I, what I write, and then but this is not enough because then you need to make a deal, so you need to sign stuff, and then or you need to have a lawyer. It's and such it's, a it's, dangerous it's a, game. Man. Yeah. So in the end of the day, wow. it, it we didn't make a deal, and and um, this is the BBC. This is incredible. Yeah. Like think about the 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 craziness of. On one hand, you've got people extremely against this in the same level of industry as BBC, yeah. which is a massive corporate giant. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they see the huge value in it. It's so the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Yeah. And where you sit in the, in the chain of events. It's, it, it's, it's a shame that we couldn't make that deal because I would say it would show... The hypocrisy of the government, and but especially in England, where they've got so many cameras and they say every five minutes about our safety and this and that, that this is for your safety, mind the gap, you know, uh, don't do this, don't speak on the phone at the petrol station, this, this. And then this documentary is very... Um, it's kind of edgy, you know I mean? It's very controversial, controversial to many people. Mm. And I think if the pe- if a lot of people would see that in the evening, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. on BBC. Mm. They would ask themselves questions saying, hold on, well, you're saying to us, it's all the safety, this, that, and then you do everything for our own good. But then these guys, they break into the like, yards, train depots, and they could blow it up fully. They could do anything they want, anywhere they want. So something is wrong with all the money that goes for this being safe, you know. What I mean, so oh. I think, I think it I've would never be, thought of that. Yeah, I think it would be. It could be a a a big um, debate uh, on on in the media and in the newspapers about just what that. The, what just the that cameras thing. are really for? Where are our money going? Mm. And and are you really telling the truth? Just imposing all them restrictions. Mm. Why them boys clearly not a heavyweight champions in like war and like they're not any commando, uh, but the guys who are pretty intelligent and smart how to do things and they can kind of you know sneak around the places and uh, below the below the attention line exactly that... and it's apparently mm. yeah it's like yeah super secret super um, impossible which is obviously not true. Um, do you think that's what they don't like the most about this? If it was to go on, like a BBC Four or a whatever, I think they would hate it. I think they would hate that for sure, and then someone would lose the job. Well, I can see this, like you know, I watch those document. I love documentaries, you know, so I love doing this, right? <laughs> yeah, man, and I, you know, I feel like there are 
worse things out there that are being documented that get the mm. shine. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that, that for me, it, 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 it's not, as, it's problematic that they can accept certain, you know. Yeah, but I think it's just, um, as you said before, this movie tells the truth or shows the truth in a way and tells as well, the both. And many people would feel very uncomfortable on the top right. facing 10 people debate in the office um, what they've just seen and mm. how, the, how the public will react in Guardian newspaper tomorrow morning right. on that thing. Right. You know, um, so I think it's just it's uncomfortable questions. They yeah. don't really want to answer, and and it's always been like this. But like when yeah. the projects like this coming out, they're really trying to shut it down. Like we before the this podcast we talked about like new um, um, graph magazines. You know what I mean? The the there was quite a few that have been shut down or stopped because the promotion of it encourage people and 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 builds questions among the society public you know i say oh you know and also a lot of people like graf and we know as the writers because when we wait like when you take wait for photographs in the morning a lot of people appreciate it and they say wow it's cool and they approach you when, you take, when you take for, it's random people that are filming random and people, seeing it random people they, and then yeah. how that that kind of reaction or that approach from a stranger to you got things to prison sentences in England and this like it, it clash it mm. clash is like whoa the people like it but you're still putting you know so I think there is a, a, a chain of questions and it goes from a simple uh, yeah from from one question to another and it builds up builds up and 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 whoever sits there you know after like five of them he feels super uncomfortable what do you think the uh, yeah I think there's some there's some questions that should have been answered in the 80s, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Which is kind of why yeah. it's important to raise these yeah. sort of subjects now. What do you think the answer is? Um, well, the, the, to which question? Because we... <laughs> I'm, I'm what's, the, what's the... Uh, to bring questions, n needed questions, about the culture, mm. what, what do you want? Well, from... Uh, okay, from, from my perspective as a, as a writer, what well, I wish to not peep not not the public but i would say someone from the top we can put it in a, like a government to ease down the 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 punishments because they definitely not equal to to the outcome of what we do and it's not as bad as 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 everyone is saying and and, and picturing um and uh to be a bit more clear Another thing, a bit to them to be government, we just call it governments, a bit more clear on the fact that why legal graph is a bit more tolerance, the tolerant than, than the illegal, mm. which really they both the same. One is a bit more glorified. Um, and that, that, that's actually the two main Hmm. two main things why they remove um, taking out the trains of service and they saying they have to and they don't have to and then they pay this enormous amount of money for train being late uh, being late being cleaned hmm. they don't have to it's it, it doesn't do any friend of mine who won the case in uh, manchester and uh, the judge asked him ask the the british transfer police he said that why you didn't run this train? Because they charged the guy a lot of money for damage. damage. And uh, so the judge asked, okay, what was wrong with the train? So the train couldn't run. Mm. And there was one specialist guy, like obviously who know what he's talking about from the railway and the, the, the British Transport Police uh, spokesman. And he said, well, nothing. I mean, huh. the, the train got painted and we cannot run it. And they said, yeah, but why you can run it? Like, is it in physical condition? Like, it mm. actually can run. And he said, yeah, yeah, it could run. I mean, technically, it could run. Mm. So he said, well, it's not the problem of the boys. And it's, it's, it, if the people could jump on the train and run with it, it should run. Mm. So that was the end of the case. So he didn't pay any money. 
because they could run the car. It was their own choice. So wow. they could explain why you can run the trains. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with them. It's your own some psycho shit that you do. And uh, it's, 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 You think it's saving face because they know that if something... I don't think there's anybody out there that would want to... Just because somebody sees a piece running on a train, they immediately think, cool, that looks good, I want to do it. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. And this, this actually documents it to its fullest of why it's actually fucking super hard to yeah. do. What it might be the case is they just they, they see it for what they believe it is in their eyes and they don't want it being run because it shows that they, they lost yeah, they lost control. They lost control. They lost their faces. They lost uh, uh, the trust, the trust from the people. And uh, right. and that would be a big shame because we're talking about, this is ongoing from end of 80s, I think. For sure. Well, not end, but begin, no, sorry, beginning of 90s in right. London. So it's like they're all harassing people for this and that. And it's, um, you know, the reason, before they didn't put pre people in prison in England. Uh, in Europe, it's very rare you go to prison for this. You just, uh, it would be nice to wake up in the morning. Because the train still runs. It's, yeah, not, well, they, they, it's not damaged mm, like that. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the, 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 the consequences aren't like this. You don't go to prison for things like that because you mm. don't really harm anyone. Why would you go to prison? You know? So you pay fines or you got some bails, but yeah, you, you, you do some community service. It's just in the end of the day, you just, you just paint the train, you can clean it off. It's not a big deal. Nowadays, yeah. with all them solution on the trains, you can just wash it off with uh, with the hose under the pressure. So yes, hold on. So yeah, let's just uh, cycle around this as well. So there is, you know, as the name suggests, city of paranoia. There's electrics, you know, controlling, watching, seeing. You know, you you're being monitored all the time, yeah. and that's what breeds paranoia. You, uh, so you what you've just said there. There is a case that there is technology out there that is advanced enough that can wash off, yeah, paint on a train, yeah, easily. Easily. So, so I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's every everyone is. I mean, if if ever if, if whoever got a bit of obviously brain, uh, asking questions like you, like me, like you know, the, why, why the consequences are like this? Because what you, all them trains they painted with some with chemicals that allowed cleaners to clean wash, to clean wash the trains easier. They use just a pressure water pressure. And hose, that's it. Or scraper, that's it. In the end of the day, that's it. Okay. So it's it's you know. It, it's just but no one like no really one says no one says this to anyone. Seems like a really harsh sentence for um, exactly yeah. Exactly. Then there's also other things that are probably a hell of a lot more crippling to a person's like going to jail for something. Okay, yeah, that damages the a person's record. It puts them on a list. It shows them that they have done wrong. But there are a hell of a lot more things out there that, as a deterrent, would be a hell of a lot more crippling than a than a than six months yeah. behind bars. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's then, that's what I come to understand. And a lot of this, like people who paint trains, like pretty, um, this is like a lot of this is sensitive people. You know, what I mean, just you've got criminals, you've got some, you know, all sorts of different people. But in the end of the day, you don't do graph. Well, you don't do mo graph, yeah, most I of the it. people, they don't do graph if they're kind of a hardcore thugs and hardcore criminals. You, 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 like, maybe you've got few of them, but generally speaking, the people who do graph, they kind of... Are they vulnerable, you think? So, yeah, social like, people, you know. They, they, so why would you harm them, putting them in prisons? It's not like a guy who's just stabbing someone with knives and stuff like that. Hey, 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 that's a really important point. Uh, the amount of people... Tell me how many people you know from the graph world uh, or you knew years ago who were like yeah, hardcore yeah. tags I mean, with I this break. This is the thing, I don't know them personally. They come on here and they, yeah. I ask them the question all the time. I'm like, dude, did graffiti save your life? Mm. And without question, all the time, yes. Because these people, like you say, they're super vulnerable. They're not yeah. like that... The, the, the uh, what you're led to believe as that person with the grandioso colors, full top to bottoms, crazy yeah, yeah. walls, train side, what that ain't it. it that, that is just a persona, isn't yeah. it? And you'd have a bit of this artistic soul or mind, even just the fact that you're taking a paper out on the table and start drawing, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
a person who just want to think about killing and robbing is not really drawing with Posca pens mm. something not some nice portraits. I mean, I doubt. I mean, maybe, but mm. I, we're talking about different people, so I don't agree with that prison thing. For it, it just it doesn't make any sense. But as I said to you before, you can wash it off, you can clean it, you can scrape it, and and there is any insurance on the top of that anyway. They they you know, so they will still get paid. See. For the damage, someone done, or at least they will get most of the money. I see. Well, I am enlightened today. <laughs> Did graffiti save your life? I don't want to say the question is uh, cheesy because I don't like to, but it's. It, I would say I would reply. For me, it was escape from reality. Mm. So I wouldn't say it saved my life, even though I grew up on the if I can say on the streets most of the time, I've been, most of my childhood, I've, I've run away from home and I, mm. and I've been kind of among friends and I've been in other cities and, and yeah, like my, my home wasn't really my home. My home was a uh, kind of my friends and street. Mm. So, um, but not a street in terms of like, you know, crime and stuff like just, just being on a street, like a street kid. But, mm. um, but it was escape from reality, from, 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 um, the fact that I have been different to the other guys, you know, I mean, I've been, uh, I didn't want to be like my neighbors or the kids from my class or um, just the mentality of staying in one hometown or in, in, in one city. I want to see the world, I want to travel mm. and I want to meet new people. I knew there is something more, something to discover. So I would say it, and it helped me to grow up because I've been drinking way too much years ago. So it showed me that when I've been on my own, I've got a lot, of, a lot to kind of to deal with. You know, I mean, mm. just uh, from day to day, everyday life mm. is not as 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 glamorous and nice as <laughs> mm. as the as the young guys see. You know, so. Which is uh, certainly documented in this. Yeah, exactly. Sure. But yeah, it was escape from reality, and it, it 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 was and it is. It's just uh, it's just a little bit different world, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like a schizophrenia in a way. Mm. Say <laughs> again. A, it's yeah, what? It's like a schizophrenic uh, people, schizophrenic, you know. Yeah. yeah, they've got two personalities in a way, so you can. Yeah. Oh, schizophrenic! See, we're getting <laughs> in some level. I swear to God, this has been an absolute insight, and uh, I hope it's taken that way. Anyone that's watching this, uh, yo. The man behind the plan. Um, congratulations and oh, on uh, you know doing what you felt was right and putting across a message, which I hope in years to come will be absorbed as much as I absorbed it when I watched it the other week, brother. I hope too, and uh, yeah, I hope everyone watch it. <laughs> it's great to meet you, Doctor. Great to meet you. Big shout out. Dr. ID. Yeah, hold tight, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes, people, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, giving you to Raw. Don't forget to share. Sharing is caring, all right? Tell a friend, tell a friend, subscribe, get people's on the eyes and ears involved. We are like him, was out of fashion. You stay lucky, people. Peace.